Good evening and welcome to tonight's, or this morning I should say, broadcast, this seventh day of June. And what a glorious June it's been so far. This month we're reviewing two books. Uh, the first is Know Your Bible um, and it's by Paul Kent. And it basically states all 66 books explained and applied. So we kind of know what it's about really and what it's going to gear towards. Excuse me, I'll have a swig of my coffee. Um, well, first of all, the reason why I'm reviewing it, and you think there's a book like that needs reviewing, and I really reviewed it really for one main purpose and that's just to reiterate a point that is firmly in my mind unbelievable and that is for you to get to know your bible the reason being is there's so many people out there that give their versions of a story or interpretations of a story and i think when you actually read it for yourself you then see somehow the truth or you can see or understand what they're talking about when they're talking about it and you can make a decision for yourself whether it sounds like something plausible or not or whether it really is the truth but you read it for yourself you, you know um, and so my whole purpose of really reviewing this is to really encourage a lot of people to do exactly that. Know your Bible was I'm sure that this author, Paul Kent, had that intention when he actually wrote this book. Um, so let's dive in and see what's in there. Okay. So it says all 66 books explained and applied. So that's interesting. So it's not just explaining it, but it's also giving you practical applications. And I know for a lot of people, they don't fully understand the Bible because of the time it was written and the um, attitude of the people at the time. So, bearing that in mind, I'm just going to go through what the book's about and what, what I actually see when I read it. It says here, it's copyrighted in 2008 by Barber Publishing, and there's an ebook edition, which is the version I've got at the moment um, on Kindle. And, um, okay, so that's basically, um, it says it excerpts of brief quotations in printed reviews without written permission of the publisher. Churches and other non-commercial interests may reproduce portions of this book without its best written permission of Barber Publishing, provided that the text does not exceed 500 words, that the text is not material quoted from another publisher. Okay, well, I'm seeing basically doing this um, just to review it as how I see it um, and how you know um, to the best of my ability without being biased um, as to what I think of the book and what I I get from first impressions so it says all scripture quotations unless otherwise quoted are taken from the new kings from the King's James version of the Bible and it says here, scripture quotations marked NIV are taken from the Holy Bible in the international version. Can't be okay. And okay. So the contents of this book, it has the introduction, and then it lists, as you'd expect, the books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, uh, Job, sorry, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colosseums, 
1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, Revelation. Okay, then we have the introduction. It says through 66 separate books, 1,189 chapters and hundreds of thousands of words, the Bible shares one extraordinary message. God loves you. I'm in agreement with that because he certainly does. From the first chapter of Genesis where God creates human beings through the last chapter of Revelation where God welcomes anyone to take the water of life freely, 2217, the Bible proves God is intimately involved in familiar with and concerned about the lives of people. His amazing love is shown in the death of his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. That sacrifice for sin allows anyone to be right with God through simple faith in Jesus' work. These truths are found in the pages of scripture, but sometimes they can be obscured by the vast amount of information the Bible contains. That's why Know Your Bible was written. In this little book, you'll find brief surveys of all 66 Bible books. Each summarises what that book is about, always within the context of God's love and concern for people. Every entry follows this outline. Author who wrote the book, according to the Bible itself, or an ancient tradition, the date when the book was written, or the time the book covers, mm -hmm. in 10 words or less, a nutshell glance at the book's key theme, Details, please a synopsis of the key people events and the messages covered in the book. Quotable one, two or several key verses from the book. Unique and unusual facts, some serious, some less so, and make the book stand out. So what? An inspirational or devotional thought for each book. Your Bible is certainly worth knowing. I'm in agreement with that. Use this book to begin a journey of discovery that could truly change your life. So it starts with Genesis. It says the author, not stated, but traditionally attributed to Moses. Date, Moses lived around 14,000 SBC. But the events of Genesis date to the very beginning of time. In 10 words or less, God creates the world and chooses a special people. That was really concise. I'm really impressed with that. Details, please. The Bible's first book never explains God. It simply assumes his existence in the beginning in God. Verse 1, 1. Chapters 1 and 2 describe how God created the universe and everything in it simply by speaking. God said and it was so. 1, 6 to 7. 9, 11. 14 to 15. Humans. However, receive special handling as God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. 2, 7. A woman was crafted from a rib of that man. Those first two people, Adam and Eve, live in perfection, but ruined paradise by disobeying God at the urge, urging of a subtle, crafty three to one serpent. Sorry, three, three, crafty three one. Okay, chapter three, verse one. Serpent. Sin throws humans into a moral freefall as the world's first child, Cain, murders his brother, Abel. People become so bad that God decides to flood the entire planet, saving only the righteous Noah, his family and an ark boat full of animals. After the earth repopulates, God chooses a man named Abraham as patriot of specially blessed people, later called Israel, after an alternative name of Abraham's grandson, Jacob. Genesis ends with Jacob's son, Joseph, by a miraculous chain of events, ruling in Egypt, setting up the events of the following book of Exodus. Quotable. God said, let there be light, and there was light. That's one, three. The Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? That's four, nine. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, six and eight. And he, Abraham, believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. That's 15 and six. Unique and unusual, Genesis, Genesis quickly introduces a concept of one God, in multiple verses, persons, a concept later called the Trinity. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, 126. Emphasis added. Also, early on, 
God gives a hint of Jesus' future suffering and victory when he curses the serpent for deceiving Eve. I will put an enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's 3 and 15. So what? Genesis answers the great question, where did I come from? Knowing the answer can give us meaning in the world that's otherwise hard to figure out. Then it moves on to the book of Exodus, and pretty much in the same format, it summarises Exodus. But so far, I think, on the face of it, I like the style of it. It's concise, it's easy to understand, and it literally gives you a breakdown, just as you saw that very first chapter, of the whole book of Genesis, in just some, you know, of the, the bits that, you know, are really the key points of the book. It just, it, it extracts it and puts it into simple, noddy fashion words. And I think it's, this book is good if you really just wanted a glimpse at what you want to see and then what you might want to delve into a bit more. But don't rely on it as, how can I put it? That's all you need to do and that's all you need to know because the sheer beauty of the Bible is when you actually read it slowly and savour every single word and think about what the situation was and what God means and what, how, how God is for yourself because that's how you truly develop an understanding and to know God through his books, his word, his written his scriptures. You get an understanding of what happened and events and you can basically make your decisions based on what you've read and experienced. And it's a very interesting and delightful thing and nourishing thing for the soul to read the Bible. So I give this book definitely a thumbs up. I, I can see already it's, it starts, but it really, I think if any criticism, and it's not even going to really be a criticism, just... It just oversimplifies everything. It's for the lazy person, really. But to really know something is to meditate on it, to really go and delve into it for yourself. But this just this just gives you the, the skeleton, really, or the shell of what, what the whole book is about. So it's a really excellent, I think, concisely written um, book about the Bible. And I certainly would want to read through it just to refresh my refresh my mind about what each chapter is about and the meaning of each um, bit. Um, having read the book from cover to cover myself, but I'm slowly going through it again, obviously. And um, it's nice to know what each part had and entailed, you know, because um, I, 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 what I find is I'm reading it again, but this passage, I think, did I really read that last time or did I see it last time? And, you know, sometimes it can be like that. You miss things. And it could be because of lack of concentration. You're too tired at the time you read it. Or you just skimmed through it. You didn't really take in in depth of what something meant. Or it could be that you just weren't open to seeing something because you never experienced it. So you didn't perceive or understand um, the meaning of a certain passage. So I really encourage you to read the Bible, but not just to read it once, but read it repeatedly over and over again as you go through life. Because I can guarantee you a passage you read 10 years ago may have a new meaning to you 10 years later. When you say, aha, I think I know what happened. I understand now, you know, because until you've actually been through an experience, or you have it revealed to you, it's very hard to perceive and comprehend. So I'd certainly definitely encourage uh, this if you were somebody who just wanted to know roughly what was in each chapter. And if it was to really whet your appetite, it certainly would do. But as I said, the joy of reading the Bible is through doing it yourself and really taking the time to nurture yourself with it. So on that note, I'd like to end um, this review of the book with a thumbs up to Paul Kent for this book, Know Your Bible, and encourage you to get your own copies and to read it if you know, 
if you're somebody who most probably needs things broken broken down to you um, in simple, noddy fashion that you can understand. But also take your time and read the Bible for yourself. And use this as a guideline to know that you're pretty much on course to understand the gist of what's going on. So that's it. Until the 19th of this month, we uh, will be reviewing the second book, uh, which is a book I've written myself. Um, oh, so I hope to see you then. Okay, take care.